<sighs> All right, everyone, how we doing? Give a couple moments for people to see that the uh, video is up and moving and that uh, we are doing things and stuff. I'm just checking my, yeah, it looks like we got the couch there a little bit in the way. That's okay. Um, so today what we're gonna be working on is escaping the back position. Um, I'm gonna talk a lot about the grip fighting and the hand fighting that goes along with these escapes. Uh, I think that when, when people work escapes or worry about getting out of a bad position, they're worried more about like what technique should I know more than how should I survive. And, and it has to be survival first. So as I'm talking here, I'm gonna greet people who are coming in. Who we got? We got Jess, Casey, what's going on? Vaughn, how you doing? Um, so anyway, I wanna talk a little bit more about uh, how to survive these positions um, before we talk about even necessarily the techniques. So uh, Heather's gonna have my back. We're just gonna talk very generically about, uh, and Heather, you're gonna wanna move your hips back so that you don't feel like you're falling down. There you go. And so, so we're here, let's actually scoot forward so that our friends can see. So we're gonna play this romper room style. Guys, we've got the top arm and we've got the bottom arm, the one that's coming underneath my, my uh, uh, armpit. Which one do you feel is the threat to me right now? Right, it's the top arm. No, I'm kidding. Um, one of the things I see a lot is, is how people are grabbing with their hands. And I see an emphasis on this outside hand. This is the choking arm. Can you demonstrate, Heather, how that would come around the neck? Yep. See, that's the one that I have to worry about first, all right, if we're already here. So once we're here, I see everybody trying to get this arm tight. But it's actually this arm that's going to protect them. That's why a lot of times you'll see people take their bottom arm, control here, and like try to manipulate to get to the neck. Because this, have they get to my neck anyway? See what I mean? Like, that's not a strong enough position necessarily. Now you might encounter people who are giving you problems there, for sure. But it's easier to deal with than, can I have this back please? Than this. Watch, I wouldn't even close my hand, get to my neck. See, and that's like her trying to be tricky. I just, just try to force your way to my neck. Just force it. Don't be crazy. She can't go through my arm, okay? This, because the opening is toward my neck, when she breaks it, she snaps boom, rubber bands right into my neck. This one, the opening is away from my neck. So even if I keep my hand open, she doesn't phase through like Kitty Pride. All right? So that's important to know. So go ahead. Control. So we're here. The first thing to do is to worry about getting this outside arm in control of her, her choking arm. And the way I do that is I'm going to, and you'll see different people, actually, what I'm about to show you, I have seen contended, and I've seen really good people say, don't do it this way, and I've seen really good people say, do do it this way. So my contention with you is if you don't like it, try it a couple different ways, and you'll see what I mean. But it's about what I do with my neck. I am a, a fan of the idea that I should almost always have posture. And if we look at the typical back defenses, they're all here. There's no posture. That's like the opposite of posture. That's becoming the hunchback. I want you to expand your chest and bring your head back and almost like you're, you're trying. What, what, what's Robbie always say? Let's go back just a little bit. What's Robbie always say? The beaker position? like. It's, it's like you're trying to be that, that weird character from, from uh, Ernest, for those of you who watched Ernest back in the day. No? Too old for you? Um, too weird for me. Yeah, I get that. So anyway, you, you want to be here, all right? So let's... So I take my outside arm and I keep my elbow high. I'm always going to be fighting my hands over top of her arms. So if Heather's trying to get, because if you remember, when we were on the back, we wanted our hands on top, right? So Heather, can you demonstrate? See, she comes over, controls, and then she, she can free that hand up to push this one off. Boom, and now she's at my neck, okay? So that's what we were talking about from the other side of this position. Here, we want to do the exact opposite. I'm always working to stay on top. And look, here's, how, here's part of how I do that. See this elbow? One of the things Heather wants to do is to grab my wrist here, kind of lean me, and then when she can, let's turn this way, 
she'll use her leg to replace this. She'll push this down and get her leg over top, and now she can choke, and I only have one arm to try to defend with. Okay? So, to avoid that, I keep that elbow high. It's one of the few times that you're going to hear me say, bring your elbow away from your side. But that elbow stays high until I can get this arm really off of my neck. Okay? So, I'm doing a couple things here. One, she's, she's kind of tight. Can you guys see that she's kind of snug here? I get this hand in like I'm pulling away a little bit. Boom, making room for my thumb. And now I kind of shimmy and look up. See how that brought her away from my neck? It wasn't so much me pushing it down. Keep tight, please. See, I'm not pushing it down. I'm shimmying up. All right, let's turn 90 degrees. So you want to move your hips back. Remember the last few classes. There you go. Because why, why is that, Heather? Do you remember? Uh, no. You need to keep your chest on my shoulder blades, right? So that your head is elevated above mine where you can't choke me. You were the uke in that class. All right. So I'm coming in, controlling high. I know you can't see my face, but what matters is all of this. I shimmy. All right. And this is where I'm going to end up. Right here. Now. The last piece, if we remember, if we remember the controls of everything that we were doing, it was um, her arm coming around. And she's got the seat belt grip. She's got her head on one side and her shoulder on the other, and you're compressing the person like right there, right? So now that I've got her shoulder kind of out of position, I need to get my head off of hers so that I can actually uh, initiate my escape. We're gonna go that way a little bit, and you'll be facing. Um, or, you know what, I lied. You're going to face this way. I want people to see my legs. <clears throat> okay. So I do everything we just talked about. Now, see how her head is still in my way? I can throw myself to that side all I want. And as long as she stays real tight here, stay very, very tight. You're going to want to use the glasses. Always just assume you don't want those. There. Boom. I can come over here, and it's still going to be hard to rotate because her head is in the way. Keeping posture will help that. My back is straight, watch this foot. Steps, toes are engaged on the ground. I use it to lift my hips, rotate my hips. Now I can move my head to the other side. All right, that's key. If I stay here, it's easier for her to recover using the methods we talked about yesterday. Once I get my head down, now I can release, and she's going to be trying to step over to the mount. We're going to block that, walk off, come up inside control, try not to drive my wife into the, the little kid's kitchen there. All right. So let's look at it one more time. And this is the one out of the fundamentals. Let's turn this way. So I've got my, my grip. Notice elbow high. It makes it hard for her to control that top arm. Step, drive, step over. This reverse shrimp action is key. Turns my hip, my head comes to the other side of hers. All right, she's gonna be thinking to go to mount, so I'm gonna block it. Off, look, in. That's the sound you're looking for. That sound is you know you did it right. You'll hear like a, because you've driven all your weight right into their abdomen. Are you alive? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. And Nate said he felt sorry for you for the other one. Oh, jeez. Um, so that's the, that's the basic escape that we teach white to blue belt. All right? Big key details, guys. Hands cascading over. Whoever has their hands on the top is winning. Remember that. Um, the next thing I want to look at with this is a different opportunity. So... Let's say we're earlier in the process. And sometimes, guys, I know that the back gets taken in a different way. We all, uh, you're gonna be on my back, right? <clears throat> I, I guess what I'm saying is I know that we don't always end up in this nice, pretty, seated back position, right? But you can usually get yourself to this. And, and the way that is, is like, you've gotta move around. So one of the things that I like to do here is lean forward. And I'll even hug the legs. Take your hands and hug the feet. Heather, get a solid back position. Very difficult. 
and the harder she tries, watch this. I extend my legs, digging my, my heels in. I'm going to open the parachute, scoop forward. All right. Now I feel, I'm feeling which elbow feels like it can get outside of her leg first. In this case, it happens to be my right elbow. Boom. And I'm ready to pass the guard. Crack. Well, headbutt action. Let's look at that from a different angle. What? Guys, put an F in the chat for Heather. Ah. All right. So we're here. And it grabbing the, the feet and I'm kind of holding them to me. This makes it really hard for her to get my back. And actually, let's look at this. Let's, let's proof of concept. Let's switch. So I get to have the hooks, but you lean forward and grab my feet. Lean way forward. Hug those. Keep your elbows tight. Pull them to your chest. <clears throat> Don't let me pull you back. <laughs> I can't get her back either. So that's important. And when, when might this happen? Let's look at it. A position where we, she's got my back. Boom. Maybe we were here, right? And you, you're fighting, fighting, fighting. And you see, look, elbow high, right? If I keep my elbow low, she comes over it with her leg. I'm in trouble. Boom. No good for me. All right. So my elbow's high. And I see the opportunity. Kick. Come on. Boom. I get the feet. All right. She got loose. I got the feet. Does that make sense? So that's a situation where that might happen. So it's not really like... Okay, guys, you're here. You're going to lean forward. You're going to grab the feet. It's more like you see an opportunity and you go there. It's like a safety blanket. All right. Let's turn this way, please. So I'm right here controlling. Um, I believe Henry calls it the parachute grip because like you're going to open up like a parachute. We're all condensed. She's trying to get it. My feet go forward. I dig the heels in like, like a cowboy digging in spurs. I'm going to open and pull my butt toward my feet. My feet do not come back. My butt is going to move toward this brown square. So I'm here. Boom. Come over. So that's a great, great way to escape. Um, are there any questions so far? Let's, let's take a moment, see what questions we have. I'm going to see who else is on. We've got... Jeremy, what's up? Amy, how are you? I'm going to wave at everybody. David Byatz, what's up? And guys, for anybody who's interested, I am able to do a few private lessons, but I have to do them like at your house and stuff like that. If anybody's interested, it's not like, I'm not trying to like, if you're like dying for jujitsu, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is it's possible, but at the same time, do know that you know, we can't hold classes. I'm not suggesting like some kind of class. It, ha it would have to be like a private one-on-one. -on -one. We still need to do the whole social distancing thing, less than 10 people, that kind of thing. But if that's something you're interested in, let me know. Are there any questions at all? I don't think there's anything so far. Okay, Heather, do you have any questions here? I don't. Okay, you know what's going on. It's your turn. Let me see you try it. <clears throat> Heather's going to drill the move. The one we just did. The parachute one? Yep. Oh, stay right there. Lean forward, grab the feet. Heels uh, go away from you. Boom. No, no, uh, like, like keep your, keep them so that you can dig them in and pull yourself forward. There you go. Lean, lean, lean. And when you're ready, you explode forward and lay back. Open. I bring those feet open. You'll open my feet and pull your butt toward your heels. That's it. Now, see how your elbow is outside? Let go of one, drop that elbow to the ground as you rotate and look at me. Look at me as quickly as possible. There you go. So that's another important key there is she wants to give, when we roll, watch what happens. I'm going to actually have you kind of move over here. Pretend you were on my back. Boom, you're here. I come out. Bang. There's going to be a moment right here where you can still see my back. I want to minimize that exposure to my back. So as I come up, I'm already looking at you. As early as possible, I get my eyes on the opponent. That way they can't retake my back. You get someone who's quick and explosive and they'll just, you'll, you'll do this and they'll just boom right back onto you because they see your back still. So you need to minimize that. Does that make sense? All right. Um, 
Let's look at some drills that can help you with these movements. The first thing, by the way, anybody still doing the, the movement drills? Good job. I know I haven't posted mine recently, but I'm sorry about that. Um, the first one, though, that I recommend is the reverse shrimp. So you'll be laying on your back, okay? And normally we would do a shrimp here, hips going up, yeah? The reverse shrimp, we extend the leg, and I'm going to pull my hips toward my foot. Okay, so it's almost like a piece, a, a piece of building has collapsed on me. And I need to get out from under it. And all I can do is slide out. Okay? So that's the reverse shrimp. That's a really good move to work on in order to get good at this technique. Ah, uh, the first technique. Um, the next one is just butt scoots. So you can just sit here, dig your heels in, scoot, scoot, scoot. That's essentially the second move. The next one is, I'll turn this way so you don't have to like stare up my, my nether regions. Just little upa action, little bridges. And then you can work the, like the bridge all the way over. Boom! Because that's essentially what you're doing at the end of that second option. And I would argue at the end of the first option too, you hip out, bring your head to the ground, and then you've got a bridge and come over. Um, all right. You guys want one more option, or do you want to work on those and see where we go? Show that reverse shrimp again. I've never seen that. Yes. Or I, or I maybe have, didn't know it was called that. Yeah, so it's just the opposite of a shrimp. Um, so I'll lay to my side, and instead of going backwards, see how my legs are extended? Imagine you're at the end of this, and you just come forward instead. Boom. So... Essentially, you do it. If you ever do shrimps in place, you're already doing the move. It's because you're going one, two. You're just not consciously thinking about it. I did a seminar one time, and the instructor, that's all he did was stuff that works from that reverse shrimp. And he, he called it the positive side of the shrimp and the negative side. Um, you know, whatever words you want to use, hmm. it's, it's the opposite side. But it's just as important um, as, as the escape. Typically... When you're doing a normal hip escape, you're trying to create space. And when you're doing the reverse, you're trying to take away space and get underneath someone. So that's typically the case. In this case, we're actually creating space using it. So a really important movement to, to practice in jiu-jitsu. All right, guys. Um, so the only other thing I want to talk about, um, it, it, so far the, the state of Ohio is closed till the 6th of April. I think everybody's heard on the national news that the president has called for everybody to stay closed through the end of April. Um, I'm waiting to hear from the state of Ohio to know exactly what is what, but uh, given the track record that Ohio seems to have on this, I would imagine that it's going to last through all of April. Um, so again, be getting in contact with me, communicate with me if you're having any problems with anything. Um, you know, Just let me know. I'm here for you. I'm, I'm trying to help you out. Any way I can. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else? I'm going to post some pictures. Ed and I started actually tearing down a lot of the academy. The wall where it was broken behind the thing is fixed. Um, that's fixed and repainted now. Um, but uh, it looks like a suit, if everything goes the way it's been going, our first class back will be in the new school, which actually is pretty exciting for me. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, Ed and I are very excited about it. I know uh, Kendall hasn't seen it yet. I'm probably going to take him there next week. Um, we're allowed to do essential business tasks. Moving the school, of course, is an essential business task. Um, so we'll be able to work a little bit for that. Um, the other thing I want to report is that uh, I've, I've been contacting everybody. You should have received some sort of text. Um, if you didn't receive it, please let me know. Uh, either, you know, personal message me or, uh, you know, somehow get a hold of me, Bill at Top Level Martial Arts. Because um, I want to know how everybody's doing. I, I personally sent that text to everybody. I personally responded to everybody who responded to me. Um, and everybody's doing really well. Had a couple people who were uh, not doing great. Um, they, they, they were sick at the time that I texted them. But since then, everybody has recovered. So, um, you know, everybody seems to be doing well. In case you were wondering how, how your, your fellow teammates are doing. Um, but uh, if you guys have any questions or anything about anything going on, Please don't hesitate to contact me. 
Um, I'm very open about talking about everything. Uh, I know job situations are weird right now. I know it's just a very tough time for everybody. The other thing I'm going to remind you all is do your best. Try to be kind. Remember that everybody's scared. Everybody's got... A lot of people don't know what's going on. Remember that saying... Um, I don't know, saying this isn't about you, it's about people dying. That's not the same as saying you don't care about someone's job. And also on the other side of that, remember that when someone says, man, I'm worried about the economy, that's not the same as saying I don't care about people dying. And I think understanding that and, and, and just being as as understanding as you can um, will we'll, we'll go a long way. This one has to go walk into the hospital every single day. So she's still doing good. You're still healthy. So far, so far, so good. <laughs> All right, guys. But wash Listen. those hands. <clears throat> yeah, wash the hands. Thank you so much, um, and I'll see you guys later. If you have any questions uh, after this, post them below. I'm happy to... I'm, the camera's lower than, I, than I'm used to. I'm happy to get back to you guys. All right, thank you so much. Bye.